Lesson 5.1c, Using Percent of Change. Given an original amount and a percent increase or decrease, we can use the percent of change to find the new amount. We've learned in the last couple of lessons that the percent of change is equal to the amount of change divided by the original amount. We need to first find the amount of change that occurred. Last year, the chess club had 12 members. This year, the membership increased by 50%. How many members are in the chess club this year? So the first step is we find the amount of change that occurred. We're going to write 50% as a decimal in its decimal form, 0 0.50. We're going to multiply it by the original amount, 12. We have 50% of 12. That's equal to 6. When we do the multiplication, we find 50% of 12. The second step is we find the new amount. And the new amount is going to equal the original amount plus the amount of change. That means we have 12 plus 6. That's 18. There's 18 members this year. We did plus the amount of change because it was an increase. Remember to do both steps. One, we find the amount of change that occurred. Two, we find the new amount by adding for an increase or subtracting for a decrease. Be careful when converting percents to decimals. A percent greater than 100% re represents a decimal greater than one whole. 130% is equal to 130 hundredths. That's equal to 100 one hundredths plus 30 one hundredths. We have one whole, same numerator and denominator. We have 1 and 30 hundredths. For 215 percent, that's 215 hundredths. That would be 100 one hundredths plus 100 one hundredths plus 15 one hundredths. We have one whole, two whole, and 15 hundredths. We have two and 15 hundredths. So remember, 100% is one whole, 200% is two whole, 300% is three whole, 400% is four whole, and etc. so on. In June, Tala had $180 in her savings account. By September, her balance increased by 120%. What was the balance of her account in September? First thing we do is find the amount of change that occurred. We're going to find 120% of 180. 120% 120 of 180 is 1 and 20 hundredths as a decimal multiplied by 180. We can do a little multiplication on the side. We have a decimal point here, so there's two hops in the problem, so we're going to have two hops in the product. That gives us 216. The new amount is equal to the original amount, plus the change. So the 216 is the change. We add 180 plus 216, we get 396. In September, Tala's account balance was $396. And it's an increase, so we add the original amount and the change. On Saturday, 817 people visited the museum. On Sunday, 15% fewer people visited the museum. How many people went to the museum on Sunday? We can see that there's fewer on Sunday, so this is going to be a decrease. We find the amount of change that occurred. We need to find 15% of 817. We do the decimal form of 15% as 0 0.15 is 15 hundredths. We multiply it by the original amount, 817. We can do a little multiplication on the side. We have a decimal point here. That's two hops. So our product's going to have two hops. We're going to get 122 and 55 hundredths. This 5 tells the 2 to round up to a 3, and we round it off to approximately 123. Now we do the second step. Our new amount is equal to the original amount minus 
because it's a decrease, the change. We have approximately, because this was an approximation, we have approximately 817 minus 123, which gives us approximately 694. So about 694 people visited the museum on Sunday. It's a decrease, so we subtracted, okay? A percent of change will always be represented by a positive number. This is because the amount of change is equal to the greater value minus the lesser value, which is always positive. The amount of change is equal to the greater value minus the lesser value, whichever is which. We knew that 817 people went to the museum on Saturday. We found the new amount was 694. We subtract that and 123 people was the amount of change between Saturday and Sunday. It's a positive amount. 15% fewer people came on Sunday. For finding the percentage of a number, we have 25% of 80. We write 25% in its decimal form as 0 0.25. And we think of the word of as a clue word to multiply. So we have 0 0.25 times 80. For 43% of 92, we write the 43% in its decimal form. We have 0 0.43 times 92. For 135% of 60, we write 135% in its decimal form. It's greater than 100%, so we know it's going to be greater than 1. We have 1 and 35 hundredths times 60. 7% of 64, we write the 7% as a decimal as 0 0.07. So remember, it's going to be in the hundredths place, so it's going to have a 0 between the 7 and the decimal point. Okay, 7% is 0 0.07, and that's times 64. Just think of the word of as a clue word to multiply. Sometimes in problems, we'll need to find a percentage of increase or decrease, then find another percentage of increase or decrease. We need to add each change separately. If $1,000 increased by 10%, then increased by 10% again, we need to add each 10% separately. We can't just add 20%. We have 10% and 10%. We can't just add 20%. This is why. In step one, we would find the first 10% increase. $1,000 times 10%. We write it as a decimal. We have 0 0.10. 10% of $1,000 is $100. We add that $100 to the 1,000, we have $1,100. Now that we have $1,100, we add the next 10%. That's going to give us $110. Now we add the $1,100 to the $110, and we have $1,210. If we just tried doing it all at once by multiplying by 20%, 20% of $1,000 is $200. When we add it to the 1,000, we're only going to have $1,200. we are missing $10. We have to do each increase or decrease separately. We're finished with Lesson 5.1. We're moving on to 5.2, which is only in two parts. We're going to be calculating markups, then calculating markdowns. Knowing how to find a markup or markdown is very helpful when you go shopping and you want to buy a shirt and it says it's 25% off. You can figure out what the price is after the 25%. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.